Hey guys, Daniel here with a quick tutorial on how to use Photoshop to easily stitch images together to create wide panoramas. Thanks to some new tools available in the latest version of Photoshop that you can get with the Creative Cloud, you can create beautiful wide shots in just a matter of minutes, and it works great for photos taken on just about any camera. So we're going to use some photos from Italy that I shot on my phone to make some panoramas. I've listed some tips on how to shoot your photos so that it's easier to stitch your photos on the tutorial page, so check out our website for those. The basic gist is that you want to have each of your photos overlap with one another and try to keep the exposure and white balance the same between all of them. So here we have three photos that we're going to stitch together. You can see that they overlap pretty well and the exposures are mostly the same. Let's pop over to Photoshop and get started. To start your panorama, click on File, go to Automate, and hit Photo Merge. This window is where the magic happens. Select Browse and choose the photos that you want to stitch together. On the left, you have some layout options that basically determine how Photoshop will correct for distortions as it puts your photos together. We'll get into a little detail on how this works later, but for the most part, you can just choose Auto and just play with the other modes in case auto doesn't work well or if there's a specific look you're going for. These checkboxes down here are usually pretty helpful as well so you can keep them checked. Vignette removal is useful if you're using a wide angle lens that darkens the corners of the shot, while geometric distortion correction is pretty self-explanatory. Content aware fill we'll get to later. Hit OK and after a little bit, And now we have a panorama. If you're curious, you can hide each layer to see how Photoshop stitched it all together individually. All we need to do is a little cleanup and we'll be good to go. First, you're going to want to crop out the transparent edges that Photoshop leaves when it corrects for the distortions in your photo. But if you do have some blank areas next to a relatively simple part of your photo like the sky up here, you can use the Content Aware Fill tool to fill it in really quickly and expand your photo. So I'm going to leave these areas up in the top in my crop and I'll accept the crop by either hitting the checkbox up here or hitting enter. Now I'll get to work. All three of these images are on separate layers, so before we can start working them, we have to merge them. Like so, I'm going to come to the right here, right click all three layers and merge layers. Now that that's done, you can select the magic wand tool and use that to select all of these blank areas up at the top. We need to give the Content Aware Fill tool some content to be aware of, so we're going to expand our selection by going to Select, Modify, Expand, and 5 pixels should work just fine. Now go to Edit, and then Fill, and make sure Content Aware is chosen in the drop-down menu here, and then hit OK. And just like that, we have a seamless panorama. You can't even tell where the photos begin and end, and the extra sky up here looks pretty great. Let me deselect that so you get a better look at that. Just like that. And it's looking pretty good. Just for fun, let's do another panorama that really shows how useful the Content Aware Fill tool is. So I'm going to come up again, go to File, Automate and Photo Merge. I'm going to select three new photos for the new panorama. Hit open, leave that on auto, keep the settings the same as we used last time. Let it work. Now that's that, that that's done, I'm going to crop it just to get these blank areas out here. That's done. So you see here, we still have another sky that we might be able to expand our photo into, but it's a little more complicated because we have the clouds right here. Well, the Content Aware tool can handle these areas really well. So I'm going to select the magic wand again. Oops, I have to merge my layers first. Use the magic wand to select these transparent areas again. Again, I'm going to go up to Select, 
modify my selection and expand it by five pixels. Let me center it again. And I'll go to edit, fill, use the content aware fill, hit OK. And just like that, we got bigger clouds and they look great. And we have a beautiful panorama of the Italian countryside. So back to the modes. Perspective mode here can have some pretty dramatic effects if you have an object centered in your photo and it achieves that effect by distorting the sides of your panorama to bring the object in the center into focus like this. When the panorama is cleaned up, it looks like this. And it looks pretty cool, it almost has some depth to it. This is how the panorama would look if we used a cylindrical mode, which is what we used in the other two panoramas that we were working on earlier. Basically, each mode will give your panorama a pretty dramatically different feel, and luckily it's pretty easy to try all of the modes to see which one you like best if you're not satisfied with auto. Well, that just about does it. I hope you find these tips helpful as you go out and make some panoramas of your own.